All right, everybody, welcome to episode eight of Aces Full of Food. We got man, myth, legend, broadcaster, sideline reporter, Twitch streamer, and it says average poker player, but his hand and mob begs to differ because it dominates most people I've seen and most people we've had on the show. So, Jeff, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you giving us the shot to talk to you. So thank you, man. Yeah, you got it, Leo. It's good to be here. And you're just comparing me to other poker broadcasters like Norman Chad. So it's easy to uh, totally crush a guy like that as far as hand and mob is, is concerned. But I appreciate the kind words. Oh, of course, definitely. And I know you, you're, you know, you've done the main event, you do all poker go, but this might be the biggest stage for you. I, I don't want any stage fright. I know it's going to be tough to, you know, you're going to get thousands of messages and fans coming at your way after this bo- podcast. But again, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate you. I know you're a busy man right now. So let's hey, jump man, into I'm, it. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank, thank you so much for having me. And, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to chatting with you today. Sweet, man. I appreciate it. All right. So when did Jeff become broadcaster, poker player, badass poker player, (laughs) game show host? Break it down for us. Yeah, sure. So I've been in sports broadcasting forever, Leo. I went to school to study broadcast journalism at USC. And right out of college, I started kind of on that local TV station, sports anchor grind, you know. Coming up on the 10 p.m. news, we preview the Cotton Bowl between Ole Miss and Texas A&M and stuff like that. And so I was in that for a while, jumping back and forth between TV and radio. And this whole time, I had been playing poker, typical moneymaker boom story. My friends and I watched it on TV, and then we started to play fit and goes. And I started to get really into it and, and play tournaments in Oklahoma here and there and go to Vegas once a summer here and there to just take my shot. So I figured if I love broadcasting and I love playing poker. Why not find a way to, to merge these two passions? And, and fortunately for me, I'd kept in touch with a producer. His name is Dan Gotti, He's the executive producer now at Poker Go. And I was able to come out and audition for him and for the Poker Hall of Famer, Mori Eskandani. That was about, Leo, I think like four and a half years ago by now. And it's just, I've just been fortunate ever since that they're still uh, throwing me things to do. That's awesome. It's great because we see poker go and now we instantly think Jeff Platt. Like it's just it's okay. synonymous. Now, it, it's cool because people grew up with W po- uh, World Poker Tour and yeah. Mike Sexton. But I feel you are that with poker go. And and and, and uh, I'm a fan of any, everything you do. You're great. You're Thank awesome. You. And it, it's Thank great you. that the younger crew is, has that someone to look at. You know what I mean? And it's super, uh, yeah. super cool to see. And I think that you do a great job with everything you do. And the fact that you play poker, you know, it kind of gives you that, that, that edge of that insight to what we're, what we go through, you know what I mean? And, and that's awesome to see what, why you broadcast, you know? Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that's an important note about playing because that's just naturally going to make me a better broadcaster. Right. And then broadcasting is just naturally going to make me a better poker player. So it's my own like little, flywheel of sorts and if i play a lot i can set my analyst up in better spots i can ask better questions and if i broadcast a lot you know we're watching the best players in the world and we get to see their cards so that's just naturally going to make me a better poker player so all in all it just works really really well for me and i'm just really lucky to be in this in this kind of position and to have viewers like especially viewers like you uh supporting me so thank you that means a lot Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you got a fan here. You got a fan in my family. I told him yeah, you're coming on. Go. Every yeah, we're Brownsville, Texas has your back. Dude. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're all we're all in. No pun intended. Um, so when you started playing these sitting goes, did you ever imagine you'd be talking to the best poker players in the world and doing what you're doing now? No, I I, I could have never dreamed that that was even a possibility. Not like, oh, you know what, one day I maybe could if everything goes the right way, like talk to these guys. Like it just never, it never entered my mind until around, I don't know, 2016, 2017, 2018, when I was working as a, a reporter at a TV station in San Antonio, Texas. God bless the great state of Texas. Uh, and and I, I kind of was thinking, you know, this could in some ways translate to poker. But even then, Leo, the, my start in poker broadcasting, Poker Go brought me on to do play-by-play commentary, to just yeah. do commentary, which of course we always knew translated from, from sports to, to poker. 
Um, but I really credit Poker News and, and Sarah Herring for giving me the green light, that open door to just go talk to players, which was important, but to talk to them on camera and to condense it to kind of like a two or three minute interview. I love the, the podcast form, like the stuff you're doing. And I think that's awesome where you can sit down and really get to know somebody and have a real conversation. Unfortunately, you know this, during our TV broadcast, we have what, 45 seconds, <laughs> one minute to talk to somebody. So I, I kind of learned to be really efficient with these interviews and it's a real thrill to, to, to be a part of it in, in the poker world and talking to these guys. Some of these guys, uh, like you said, like I was just watching on TV way back in the day. And now I have this great relationship with, with Chris Moneymaker, this kind of back and forth that we have, we throw jabs at each other. And I think that translated well to TV last year, but I mean, you could have never told me that in, in high school, <laughs> at least if you did, I would have never believed you. Yeah, you would have to pinch yourself a couple of times to make yeah. sure it's real. Yeah, same thing with me. Like I, I, like even you. I think you're a big name in poker, and me getting the opportunity to speak with you is cool. You know, and uh, when I do like my research before I interview or, and and get people on, I saw some of your poker interviews. Uh, Ari Angle, I saw yeah. a couple other ones. Yeah, definitely. So it it was cool. To, it's cool to see where you started, you know, and then where you're at now. And it's I, I think that's it's a great testament to who you are because some people come Thank and you. go in poker all the time. Sure. You know what I mean? I think it's 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 just it's a testament to you and how good you are that they've you know I know it sounds bad but kept you kept you going and kept you relevant in the poker world. So I think it's awesome to see. You know. Thank you, thank you. It's like to your point, it's really all about gaining that that valuable experience. I mean, you're doing the same thing, right? You're starting to talk to people. You're starting to create podcast episodes. You're getting kind of that open door in Las Vegas this summer for for the World Series to keep trying out new things. So it's like kind of that path, uh, the, the path of progress. If you're really invested in something that you're passionate about, then you're going to put in the reps, right? Like you and I would do this and just shoot the shit, even if it weren't recording, we'd be cool with that. And just having an hour conversation about poker and broadcasting and whatever. And so that's kind of how I feel about what I do talking to these poker players. Like I would just do this off camera anyway. I would do it, you know, even if they didn't pay me, don't tell the boss is that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, probably, uh, but, we'll probably put a sensor on that one. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I'm just, I'm just totally uh, invested in it from an emotional standpoint, and it, it's just, again, I, I keep using the word fortunate, but uh, I've been fortunate enough to just have kind of doors open for me along the way. No, definitely, I'm, I'm invested. Also, you can tell by this physique, I'm very invested in food, <laughs> you know. So that's why I kind of, I kind of took this, uh, this path with the, with the food and the poker because my two favorite passions besides my, uh, my family and my faith. But other than that, those are my two, you know, food and poker. So when did you make the jump from where you said, ah, I'm going to take these sit and goes and I'm going to try, I'm going to try a WSOP event. I'm going to play a tournament, a live tournament. Yeah. Let's see. That's a good question. I mean, online poker, of course, was really in its heyday when I was in college. So that's like in that kind of 2005 to 2008 range. And just going home from school and instead of studying, or instead of putting together whatever stupid essay you had to do uh, for your random elective class, just firing off on you know, the, uh, the $11 Midnight Madness on Full Tilt. Oh, or something. the best. Yeah, yeah. The Daily Double, A and B. Yeah, the Daily Double. You can play A and B. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I, I'd say the passion developed then. I went to school out in L.A. So before I was 21, I was pretty close to Morongo um, in mm -hmm. the – southern california area and then when i was 21 of course had access to the bike to commerce to hustler and then we were just a short time away from las vegas so i started playing more and more tournaments and looking back now leo like i i would have considered myself passionate about the game back then but it, it's nothing compared to what it is now it's more like i would play a couple tournaments every couple months and i would go to vegas once a summer and i would play the one care the 1500 or maybe uh, the 2,500 six max or later on in my poker career, I started to play the main, but, it, but again, it's, it's nothing compared to, uh, the passion that I have for the game now and the amount of time I put into the game now, but that's basically when the love for poker really developed. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I, and, and like you said, it, it, it's funny because the daily double and all those, like the $3 rebuy on stars, I'm sure you remember, yeah, do yeah. you remember your screen names? Sure. My, mine was very basic. It was very simple. It lacked creativity. I was Mavs USC because I was a big Mavs fan from Dallas originally. And I went to school at USC. So like, 
you know, I'm not the most creative guy in the world, as you see, you see Buddy, who always wants to make uh, podcast appearances. He kind of just, you know, Is that a little Yorkie? My, yeah, yeah, he's a little Yorkshire Terrier, a little uh, rescue dog that we got off the mean streets of, of Las Vegas. Uh, always, always trying to take away my camera time, Leo. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, no, so, it's perfect. I have my dog. I have a York, a Yorkie too, and then I have okay. a, a rescue also. We have a beautiful German Shepherd mix, white. Oh, I don't know what kind of, yeah. So huge love fan that. of rescue, yeah, for sure. Love that. So yeah, Mavs USA is just very, very basic. Did you have any big scores? I want to say my biggest online score was winning like the, what was it? A 25 plus two or a 26 plus two, like just whatever big full tilt 7 PM one was for like $8,000. And that, and that was huge. That was, oh, that was back, then, huge for me. back then. Like that was just, uh, you know, that probably. That's two months. My bankroll by 80. Yeah. That, yeah. All the buy-ins there. So yeah, that, was, for sure. that was my biggest score online that I can remember. I remember doing that in, Right away, whatever I deposited before, I would double it and withdraw it, and it was in my account. I felt like I was free rolling life. You know what I mean? Like, all right, if you're the richest person on the planet, yeah, yeah. if you get that withdrawal in a hundred percent. So I'm looking at your hand about your first, your first recorded was a fifteen hundred and fifty fifteen dollar buy in the most deep stack tournament in LA. You got twenty second place for twenty seven fifty. I remember that. I remember that well because I played a satellite the day before, and I think it was. I think it was like a $300 satellite, busted that, had probably $300 less in my poker bankroll. I'm like, why not fire it all off on one tournament, right? You know, that's <laughs> yeah, fantastic no bankroll management. Uh, I won the satellite and then somehow remember making a run in, the, in that tournament that you just mentioned and then getting the chips in. I mean, you know, not, not that we're here to tell bad beat stories, but I did get the chips in very good against, I think, future Poker Hall of Famer Chris Bjorn. And what I remember about that is not losing – I just remember how nice of a guy Chris Bjorn was and like how respectful of everybody he was. And he was like dressed in a sport coat and he took it really seriously, but, but not, not too seriously. Like you see some guys do nowadays sure. where they like, won't even acknowledge the presence of anybody else at a table, but it was just a real class act. And that's something that, that I'll remember uh, forever from that tournament. Yeah, of course, especially it being your first one and having yeah. that experience always good. I'm, I, I mean, like I said, I'm a nobody, but I'm, I'm a huge believer in, chatting it up at the table, making sure everyone's yeah. having a good time. Love yes, that. sir. No, sir. I, I mean, I'm still scared of my father in a good way. Like I respect the crap out of him. So like good. anybody like I'm yes or no, sir. Like I think it's just, you know, that's just the way the game should be treated. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, I a hundred percent agree with you. So yeah. Uh, going back 2014, you catch in the main. That's awesome. 203rd for 44 kid. That was your first, Kind of big score. Oh, the Rio, damn, the Rio Daily, second place. Yeah, that's and that, sick. That one was again the tail end of a Vegas trip where I probably played a one k or fifteen hundred or maybe two tournaments. And just last day, you know what? Let's just relax. Let's fire off on a daily deep stack. Don't have the money to play anything else. And just got hot in that one, which is <laughs> what you need to do. You know, it's a super especially promo. late. Yeah, especially late. It's a one-day tournament. That was back when those tournaments were just absolutely massive. Um, I, I finished in second, like you mentioned. And so I said, okay, I'll plan another trip out to Vegas to play some satellites to the main. Because now, again, like we just mentioned, once you get one score, you feel like you're, you're oh, rich, yeah. you're, right? You're unstoppable. You're, yeah, you're unstoppable. I mean, you, you have all the money. It's never going to go away, of course. And so I, I land in Vegas. I start playing my first satellite. And a family friend calls me and he's like, hey, I'll put you into the main. Stop, stop with the satellites and we'll just make a deal. I'll put you in. And, and so I'm like, oh, that sounds, that sounds good to me. And that, All that in. Was, yeah, and that was the very first main event experience that I had. That's super cool. It, it's I played my very first one last year. It was one of the best experiences. I tell anybody, look, I've, you know, I've played high, high stakes cash. I played it all. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. playing the main mm. is, oh. I, I got chills just talking about it. Like my first time, like it was such an experience. If and 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 that's one of my things. Like if I could ever help people, like fulfill a dream or give a, yeah. like, be able yeah. to help somebody, I'm gonna help them play the main because it's such an event. The atmosphere, the everything is just so cool. I'm glad you said that because there is absolutely nothing like the World Series of Poker main event and the emotional roller coaster ride that you go on and you know this now having played the main, it's 
it's so unbelievably intense and incredible at the same time. And when you win a pot, you are on top of the world and you think, oh my God, I'm going to be the next World Series of Poker Main Event Champion. And when you lose a pot, you are absolutely devastated. Like, no, my dreams are dying right in front of me. It's like, a, it's like Rick Carlisle, the current Pacers coach, former Mavs coach, would always say about the NBA playoffs. Like when you, when you win a game, you're on such a high and you think you're unbeatable and you're never going to lose a game again. But when you lose a game, you're just, again, absolutely demoralized and devastated and feel like you just can't win. And, and I've always felt the kind of similarity to, to the World Series name. A hundred percent agree with you. Does, okay. Doesn't he look like Jim Carrey, Rick Carlisle? Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. a spot on representation of Jim Carrey. A hundred percent. Like, I think they yeah. could be brothers. That's besides the point. All right, we get back to conversation. But yeah, no, it, it's... I lost half my stack in the first hour and I, I wanted to crawl in the hole. My wife stayed to watch and to go on break. Uh, Babe, what's your chip stack? And I was like, God, don't. Just, I felt just so much. Cry. Yeah, I was like, oh, I told her. She's like, no, you got. So I battled back, bagged. I bagged and then we made it deep to day two, but we busted. But I could have won it. I could have. I mean, it was the experience of the situation. Yeah. And that, that's my goal. Like, you know, hopefully I can, you know, do well in life besides poker and, and sure. whatever. And I, I would love to be able to provide opportunities for people that wouldn't otherwise have it to play the main event. That are. So that's my goal. That's, you know, I'm very big into charity, very big into whatever. That being said, uh, if I'm trying to get 500 views tomorrow when I release this. Yeah. I'm going to donate a thousand dollars to the Uvalde families. So oh, wow. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Hopefully Thank we can get this to that. 500 views tomorrow and i will i'm going to do it donate it to the families of all day because i mean being an ex-teacher i was an ex-teacher i just retired okay. to play poker okay. this past it's my first year full-time me and my wife are both teachers and i you know I, we're whatever so it kind of hit in texas and it's just it's been real sad so mm -hmm. hopefully we're going to get this up there and i'm going to i'm going to donate it either way but it'd be nice to we're, we're, we're going to get it up there for yeah, sure especially for sure. now and thank you for doing that and, and thank you for your time as a teacher you know there are those the teachers of this country are like the, the under the radar heroes in, in in my opinion you know i'm i'm sure you didn't make multi millions a year by teaching and i'm sure the same can be said for your wife and i'm sure it wasn't the easiest job but to get back to the community like that is awesome so yeah it's so i i thoroughly enjoy my job i uh i was a coach so i coach football and uh softball Love that. yeah it's just so good Started a charity called All In for Athletics. Going to kick that off too. So yeah, I'm just fired up. I just, I mean, life's great. I'm so blessed. You're on the show. I mean, what else, what else can go right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, so I can break everything else and I'm still going to have the podcast. They're going to have life and everything like that. So yeah, definitely. Great attitude so, to have. Love to hear it. So let's talk about this past WSOP. Somebody went on a run little fourth place. How did that feel? How was that? That was, it was big. People on Twitter were going crazy. It was, it was in, like, I followed it. I felt like I was there with you on your rail. Talk to me about it. Well, I'm glad you said that because that's the thing that's always going to stand out to me the most, Leo, was during that run, I felt such a strong sense of support from the poker community, both from people that I knew and from people that I didn't know both from people who were there who were actually on the rail and people that were on the you know virtual rail to your point twitter was going insane and it was just so incredibly uh motivating to me to, to have that kind of support and to be able to look at twitter and see a million mentions and like let's go let's go good luck good luck like it, it, it that's what i'll take from that experience which was one incredible i mean we talked about the roller coaster ride that the World Series of Poker main event is. Uh, this was this was very similar to me because sure it's not the main, it's, it's not even close to the prestige of the main, but it is a World Series of Poker bracelet event, right? 100%. And like and like late in day three, early day four, you're starting to think like I, I could, yeah, I could win this. And we're we're on the main stage in in Amazon and. And it started to feel real, not the main stage, but one of the, the secondary yeah, for uh, sure, for feature sure. tables, which, side note, will be a much better uh, spectator experience this year with the new situation about in Paris. We can get more into that later if you want. But just, again, the overall experience of it and, and thinking the whole time, like, oh, my God, I'm actually really close to a bracelet. Now, sure, 
the money matters in these spots too. I'm not going to like try to be a big shot and be like, well, no, the six figure score doesn't mean anything to me. That was, that was absurd as well. But you're just so like locked in on, on the world series of poker final table experience and how every hand is so unbelievably important and how you're so captivated by that, that race for the, the world series of poker bracelet. So it, it was it was absolutely surreal and, and I still as you can tell have a hard time putting yeah, it into I can words. See it. And that's that's what I love to see people that are passionate that love to talk about stuff like it, it, it's it's because mm. you have people that are like, ah, well you know I, I got second in the W yeah so whatever I'll do the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a couple of a couple of hundred thousand. Yeah I could have had first but I got it in good no it <laughs> doesn't matter it's the experience it's 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 the the being a part of it, you know what I mean? Being part of that that situation that that really stands out. So playing playing the final table or your toughest interview, what was more nerve wracking? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I, I I was really nervous going into the final day of of the this 1K double stack. And we had probably I think 15 or 16 players left to start the day because I knew my family was coming in town from Dallas. I knew a couple of my best friends were coming in and I, you know, I felt it. I felt the buzz uh, on Twitter. So I felt the pressure going into the day, but once the day actually started, I was pretty settled in mm-hmm. overall. Like once we shifted to the, the, the main final table setup, once there were nine left, once it hits you that you're at a world series of poker final table, I was uh, strangely relaxed. I think with five left, my friend Ben posted a, a picture or a clip of me just like I just had All-American Dave at the table and I was just kind of chilling out and, and watching the other people play and, and enjoying a burger at the same time. Like I was just very, uh, very zen, as they say. So I, I wasn't nervous for that. I'd, I'd probably been uh, pretty nervous for, for a couple of a couple of interviews, I would say. So I, I definitely give the advantage to the interviews. Really? That's 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 crazy to see because you would think, you know, it's something new, final table and then. You've been doing broadcasts in your whole life, right? That's it, it's it's funny. So take us to the broadcasting side now. So you yes. you're playing. You, you got fourth. You killed it. Awesome. How did that kind of translate? What what going into like now? You have the final table feel, right? You you've been at a final table for a World Series of Poker event. Now interviewing these people, you kind of have their feel. Like you kind of get the yeah. thrill with them. Did that help? Like how did that translate? going yeah it's a, it's a great point and great question and i do think it really helped for specifically the world series of poker main event i don't think to be honestly uh, i'd love to say it helped for our poker go broadcast it 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 really didn't because you know these are high rollers these are guys playing 10 k's 25 k's 50 k's 100 yeah, k's sure. and it just it just we don't really relate there so so nothing really translated there but but a tournament like the world series of poker main event where you're seeing all sorts of different poker players and they're all making this run that just feels so unbelievable in their minds. And I know every step of the way is filled with an immense amount of pressure. That's where I think it, it, it really helps me in those kinds of interviews with the more unknown poker players of the world firing off in, in, in the world series of poker main event. That's where I think it, it really helps. No, I agree. And, 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 to your point, that, that we don't resonate with the big boys, you know what I mean? Like they're they're on another level as far as yeah. bankroll and all that stuff. But you get a guy that's his first time in Vegas or first time playing the main, he's going deep. You can share that kind of emotional ride with him, and the and the interview kind of feeds you all feed off each other. And I think that's you said it perfectly. Like it, it, it's such a good feeling like that, you know. And and it's great that you had that opportunity. I'm glad. Someone like you, you're, you're one of the good guys in poker. You, you were able to experience that. And now you get to showcase what you experience through your interviews and stuff like that, you know? Exactly, exactly. And that's what I hope came across on camera is that, you know, I didn't come in cold from, uh, you know, covering the NBA all season long. I'm like invested in poker. I mean, I sure, I, I know the, the pros are, but I like, I know the game as well. And I know what it's like to make a run in, in a tournament. And so I think I have an, at least an idea of what some good questions are to ask these players who are in the midst of their, their own runs. So again, that, that's what I really hope came across on camera. And that's what I hope continues uh, to come across on camera, especially this year. 
Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I mean, like I said, you do a great job and Thank you're you. becoming one in one with, with poker and as, as a broadcaster and everything. So it's just going to continue to get better for you. And it's awesome. It's awesome to see. So going back to the bracelet, I have my, my, my thing. It's WP, uh, WSOP bracelet, obviously. Yeah. Right. You got a WPT title. Yeah. You got a win trophy. I really want a win trophy. Like yeah, those, those are gorgeous. Amazing. Yeah. And then I want a WSOP ring. I don't care. I don't care. Circuit ring. I don't care if it's nine players. I want a yeah. ring. No, I want a ring. Those are my top four, like poker. Like if I could get in a poker accolades, those are what I, that's what I want to hang. What do you think? What are your thoughts on, on, on those? Yeah, I, I think, I think you nailed the list really i i mean for me personally it's different for everybody of course but the, that world series of poker bracelet that you mentioned that we've been talking about is is just by far and away number one on on any list and that's not to say anything bad about the world poker tour and i i am fascinated by what the world poker tour has been able to do over the years and i would love 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 to win one of their titles and it would mean so much but man there's something about that world series of poker bracelet and i don't i don't care how many of them are, there are, Leo. I mean, like you said, you don't care how many players are in the tournament that you win some jewelry from. I don't care how many bracelets they start to give away year after year. I mean, I, it, one is is awesome, and it's so important, and it's it's the pinnacle of poker, in my opinion. Agree, a hundred percent. And if they did, uh, if they if they were playing paper rock scissors and gave away a bracelet, I'd probably join just so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just I'm, for I'd the, be right there with you. Yeah, I'd I mean, right I mean, there like, there's no way. I'm, I'll you want to play a hundred dollar. Flipping, I don't care. I'm in a hundred percent. I'm yep. in. Yep. 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 What's coming up for you poker wise? What do you got? What do you, what do you, what's your schedule like for the summer? Well, so uh, I just went by Bally's in, in Paris today, the new home of the 2022 world series of poker. And for me, I'll, I'll be there every day, either in a working capacity or playing capacity. So I think I'm sideline reporter for five of the preliminary bracelet events. I'll do play by play alongside Brent Hanks for two of the high rollers. And then I'll work the main event uh, in that sideline reporter role alongside Kara Scott, who does return this year, which I, th I think is awesome. So it's a combination of me working and playing and on the playing side of things, I think I'll play six ish events, which is great for me in the buy-ins ranging from that $500 housewarming to, to maybe a 3k if I run kind of hot early on and, and we'll just we'll just kind of we'll kind of see how it goes but i'm excited and i'm really excited especially being there leo and seeing the the whole setup and the new setup i'm very excited for what this year's world series of poker uh has to offer both on a personal level and just on a, on a mainstream um poker level definitely so, so since you were you're here you got a little insight what do you think <laughs> talk to us about the the setup talk to us about what's going on at paris and valleys right now well, I, I think it'll be great. I, I think it's extremely accommodating to the players. And, and sure, if you live in Vegas, you might have a little harder time getting down the district. You might have a little harder time finding a place to park. You allot yourself some time the day of. But everything is just bigger. And it's just more grand. And you walk in and it feels like a different room in a good way. It's just the the lighting's better it's a bigger overall room it, wait till you see the the room in paris it's like two or three pavilion rooms at, wow. at the world series of poker and you saw one open area and it's i think it's going to really feel special and i think the world series of poker should have a presence on the strip and i'm glad that that it finally does the, the rooms will be great uh i think the staffing will is significantly enhanced this year. They hired more than 1,000 dealers. They have more than 200 cashiers. So everybody, of course, is always worried about long registration lines, et cetera, et cetera. There are no, there are no vaccine mandates that, that held up a, a significant portion of the lines last year. And, and then there's more staffing. There's a bigger cage area. There are more bathrooms. You know, it's food-wise, which I know we'll get to, it's a lot more accommodating in that area because you don't just have the All American Kitchen or Guy Fieri's, whatever, whatever, at the Rio. I, I think it's it will be great for poker. They said it today. I agree with them. I think it'll be the biggest World Series of poker that that we've ever had. Well, I really hope so for the game itself. I think you know we kind of with COVID and everything kind of not stalled, but it it didn't have that extra boom yeah. factor. Yeah, but yeah. 
I hope for the sake of the game, it's going to be great. I just love like no one. There's always going to be someone complaining, but yeah. they're still going to be there. They're still going to wait in line. They're still going to play. So let's just go do what we do with poker. It's our. It's the game we love. So right, let's right. Just I'm enjoy sure with it. you and and have have a little bit of patience, folks. Right. I, I mean, you said you said like you basically you, you don't have to play. You aren't required to play if you're just going to stand there and complain the whole time. I got into it with a guy in line at the cashiers because he was like. He was so upset and, and uh, you know, almost, or not almost, was disrespectful to staff members. I was like, dude, you don't have to be here. Like, if you hate these, this is the worst run poker tournament, blah, 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 I've ever been to. Blah, blah. And so you, you don't go play have to somewhere. come here to play. Go, yeah, go play somewhere else. And, and so you'll run into people like that. All I would say is just uh, exercise some patience, be respectful, of course, of staff members, and then stick up for people who are perhaps being disrespected by the, the assholes of the poker world. Unfortunately, unfortunately, some of them exist. But the more that they're called out, the less that, the less of an impact that that. that yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Like, I, it's 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 crazy to see people complain about waiting in line when you sit there and fold for three hours. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's bro. Like, just relax. Good point. Just chill. Yeah. Just yeah. get your ticket. Go play. Have a good time. Put a smile on your face. You're worst things in life that could be going on or you could be doing right. something completely different you're waiting in line to play a poker tournament right it's pretty good it's pretty good overall it's it's pretty good life if you're waiting in line to play a poker, poker. Tournament. yeah i would say so and then if you're going to play a, a few tournaments uh you know sign up for that that tournament account and then you're just walking up to the kiosk and you're just, the kiosks are already set up you're walking up to them you're hitting a couple buttons and boom you have your seat in whatever tournament you want to play so it's no, pretty definitely simple. i agree so my my fat R is like my radar, but my fat R was on when I went for to Bally's for the circuit event. So okay. I did a little uh, investigating myself. Nice. Yeah, yeah we, I scouted the area for dinner break stuff. I know we're not going to be playing where I was playing or where we were playing for the circuit, but mm -hmm. we have Giordano's. Mm -hmm. They have they do takeout. They already have pre-made uh, personal pan deep dishes. All right, so that's that's going to be a good a good yeah. gem. Yeah, that's a good gem. Uh, if you want a little something better, Paris has uh, the Americano Cafe. Mm -hmm. If you get there, if you're a diamond, you get to the front of the line. Good quality food. Open 24 hours. Um, Caesars across the street also has a Cafe Americano. Bellagio across the street has their uh, their little uh, snacks station. And then Caesars mm -hmm. has their food court. All walking distance, all pretty close. I think it's going to be good. I think there's going to be a lot more options. Plus, Bally's has their little, eh, okay, food court at the bottom. Yeah. So I, I, the food for food wise, my stomach, my many stomachs will be satisfied, and uh, I'm going to hopefully make a tweet here soon and tell people these are the places to hit up. And I think it's going to be good, man. I, I, I'm, I'm fired. I just want to play. Like I want a, a normal series where if you just go and have a good time. Like I and, feel and like. I think that you will be able to accomplish that, that very sentence you'll be able to accomplish. And I think a ton of people will be able to accomplish that this year at the World Series. That's why I'm so excited for it. Yeah, me too. Definitely, 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 definitely. All right, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this <laughs> podcast. All right, we're going to talk about food. Yeah. One of my favorite subjects in life. Believe it or not, I am a picky eater. I'm the pickiest, fattest guy you're ever going to meet. <laughs> but... Is Jeff Platt a eat in or let me cook kind of guy? Uh, eat in uh, for sure. Like I, I just can't. Uh, the only thing I can cook, Leo, and I do cook it every day. In fairness to me, it's not that fair because it's only scrambled eggs. That's that's the only thing that I I can cook on this planet is scrambled eggs. So I, I do the scrambled eggs in the morning. That's part of my morning routine. But other than that, I mean, I I, I use this Cook Unity uh, meal service at at night. So those are just no cooking required. You just take it, you throw it in the microwave, and boom, you're good to go. So I have that, and then take out and eating out. So it's definitely all of that versus cooking for me. <laughs> okay, so you said scrambled eggs. Yeah. How do, what do you put on them? Are you a basic just salt pepper kind of guy? I am a, a very basic human being, probably overall, <laughs> but also also when it comes to eggs, uh, that just a little olive oil spray. And then uh, a hint, Leo, just a hint of garlic salt. Um, and that, that makes the eggs for me. And that's, that's it. I don't do butter. I don't do cheese. 
don't do regular salt, don't do pepper. It's just the garlic salt, and then boom, we're good and to go. You got to emphasize. I like that you emphasize the hint because people yeah. don't understand. Like a hint is, you just give it a little. You yeah, know? it just make sure it's sprinkled, of course, all, all across. But uh, don't pour garlic salt no, onto your don't. eggs, or it's just it's just an absolute disaster. Do you do any pro uh, any other meat with it, or is it just an egg for for you? Um, in the morning, I, I've done uh, just the eggs, and then I'll also do a bowl of this uh, Catalina Crunch cereal. They call it like keto ish or something. It's it's you know one of these stupid quote unquote healthy cereals. It's like no, I've tried them high in protein. It's low in fat. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's it, it's awesome, and and so that's my uh, that's why you my eat kind it. of morning breakfast ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why I eat it. They say it's healthy on the bag, and it tastes good. So that's a good combination. Yeah, I mean, if it's hey, if it says it's healthy, you know, yeah, it must I'm be. I'm all for it. Are you a picky eater? Um, I, I'd like to think that I've become less picky over the years but i mean i i would kind of align myself more on your side of the spectrum as far as uh picky eating is concerned what are some don't touch foods like if you got to say i'm not going to eat this you know what i've been that way about tomatoes for the longest time and, and tomato sauce for the longest time and i'm coming around on tomatoes i used to say for every pizza that i got light on the sauce please light on the sauce please and now i've just kind of you know, opened up my horizons, Leo. Just we're growing up. I mean, we're growing we're, up. We're and growing up. up. Where the taste buds are expanding. Um, so it's a little bit less as far as uh, tomatoes are concerned. And then, I, you know, other than that, not a big mushroom fan. Um, let's see, olives. I just can't do olives. Ugh, I just, I so just can't do them. Just, olives just, are terrible. Just can't the do look. olives. Yeah, the, mm, it, the feel, it's just, it's just all bad. No. It's just a terrible combination uh, for any, any kind of a food. Uh, and then grapefruit, the taste of grapefruit, whether in a juice wow, that's or the a, actual that's the fruit. Okay, that I just, I just, just can't handle. But, but that's, that's pretty much it. Nothing really, really stands out as, as like, oh my God, don't, don't bring that to my table. Tiramisu, yeah, I love desserts across the board, love them. Tiramisu, hate it. Get, get, just can't do it. Get I it can't out. do it. My wife yeah. loved it, and I, my very first time we went out and she ordered it, I almost fought her. With all, <laughs> I mean, like it was, it's coffee. It's, 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 yeah. It's no, no I can't. Like, uh, it's so bad. Tiramisu, yeah. yeah, no, it's not good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not a tiramisu guy. I'm so with yeah. All right, uh, this is a big question. Are you a tilt eater or a tilt broadcaster? A tilt eater or a tilt broadcaster? Um, I would definitely, definitely say like a tilt eater, because when I have when I have broadcasting roles, I'm like, and I, I don't really even know if this were is what you're asking, but you can clarify after. When I have broadcasting roles, I'm like really focused and eating clean and if i had pizza and i love pizza and they're serving pizza to the crew i'll stay away from it because i know it's going to put me to sleep a couple <laughs> hours later or whatever but but playing when i bust a tournament the perfect example yesterday i busted this tournament at venetian and i knew that sloan's ice cream at venetian is some of the best in all of las vegas so i knew that like boom that is where we are headed so that that's how i feel as far as uh tilt eating versus tilt 100 percent that's one of our favorite questions. I'm going to give you one of our shirts. It says, "Do you even tilt eat?" And it has a picture. <laughs> it has a picture of the king, and he's and he's eating a a, a slice of pizza or hamburger. Oh. I'm sorry. So that's going to be our first. I'm going to get make sure I get you one this because it's one of our favorite questions, and I get a lot of people asking, "Oh, dude, what's a tilt eater? Or what is?" And people don't understand. Like, as snap bus, you said ice cream. That's one of everyone's yep. favorite. Like, it's so comforting. Like it's the best of every world, I think. I think so too. It's just the perfect elimination food, in my opinion. No matter what time of day, you bust at like twelve oh two p.m. right after the restart begins. Boom, you go get some ice cream. You bust at one a.m. after a long day. Boom, you go get some ice cream. It's great. Yeah, I'm I'm the guy that goes and gets. There's a Hagen Dazs. I'm Ooh. I'm just snap. Like I'm demolishing the wrapper. Like <laughs> the wrapper stands no chance against me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm yeah. taking all my frustration on that wrapper. And then I'm going to enjoy the, the ice cream. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I love that. Love that. Yeah, of course. Has to be. Okay. So 
back in your grinding days when you were in college, would your would your wins losses determine what you were eating for the day? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. I I, I mean, I, I would say overall, not really on, on a day-to-day level, but like, let's say I finished fifth in the Midnight Madness on Full Tilt for $855. I would just try to act really cool and go to a steakhouse with, a girl in LA and spend like $256, which is again, the worst like thankful management decision, but yes, it did influence uh, (laughs) what I was eating. If there were good scores, if I was losing, you know, I just, I had a subway by my place and a Chipotle and I just ate at those places all the time, regardless, uh, win or lose. You're muted now to me. I don't know if that's a me thing or a you thing. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can hear you. Uh, yeah, like I tell everybody, the calories don't change. It's just the quality of food that's going to change. Yes, 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 exactly. I may go so have sure. six cheeseburgers or I may just go have a 42-ounce porterhouse. Like, it's not yes. going to change. It's just the, the quality of it all. Yeah, yeah I'm still going to ingest food. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that. that's that's the biggest, for me, that's the biggest thing. Okay, you're from Dallas. Yeah. Talk to me about some spots you like in Dallas. Ooh, I, I think... The spot that immediately jumps to my mind, like if you were saying, okay, I'm going to go to Dallas, you know, I want a nice dinner. Where do I go? I, I think for me, it's, it's Mick and Sam's, the steakhouse that's in Dallas. I just think um, everything on the menu is exceptional. I think they have the best steak in Dallas. Uh, and, and that just, I mean, once you said Dallas, I thought Mick and Sam's. Yeah. It's like it, it's the menu, it's the atmosphere. A lot of athletes stop by. You'll see a couple of the Mavericks, a couple of the Cowboys on a random night. Um, it's just it's just so well put together from the, the business standpoint, from the, the menu standpoint, and again from the atmosphere standpoint. I just would automatically go Nick and Sam's there. That was quick. I love it. Like it was yeah. just so like I know like next time I go, that's where I'm gonna go. You know what I mean? When I go play some yeah. poker, I'm going to Nick and Sam's. I yeah. say Jeff sent you. Yeah, sure. no big deal. Yeah, he's kind of a big deal. You know, he does. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. There. <laughs> they deal with the Luka Doncic's of the world. I doubt that. You know, they've got the World Series of Poker up on the TV. So, so you said you were you 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 spent some time in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Dallas, San Antonio, kind of far apart. Totally different kinds of foods. What did you enjoy about San Antonio food? From a food perspective. And I don't like to give too much credit to San Antonio in anything. You know, I, th- I feel like there's a natural rivalry, San Antonio versus Dallas, especially Spurs versus Mavs. But I have to admit, Leo, from a food perspective, the tacos in San Antonio, I think, are better, if not significantly better than the tacos in Dallas. And, you know, you'd be like, oh, what was your favorite taco place in San Antonio? I, c- I couldn't tell you what the name of any of them are. There are all, of the, you know, a bunch of like little small shops little small setups, uh, little food trucks, and they are all, the, the consistency level of the taco places in San Antonio is, I think, second to none. Like, they're, just, they're just so good everywhere. Oh, so yeah. so that, that's, that's, again, that immediately comes to mind when you ask me that. Yeah, so I, I live about four and a half hours south. We're right by the border. Okay. So okay. our Mexican food. Oh. Yeah, so it's, it, 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 I'm saying, like, you say there's amazing. The more south you go, yeah. The yeah. more south you go, you're just you're digging in some roots. You know what I mean? Like we're, you know, we're picking our own stuff. We're, it's it's next level. It's next level yeah. stuff, right? So, all right. I scour through your Twitter, your Instagram. You're constant at sporting events. You enjoy. What's your sporting event meal? Like you go. What do you? What must you have at a sporting event? It's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think I think for, for like Mavs games, just because I've done it for so long, when I was a kid, I would just always get a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. And, you know, the, the pizzas have evolved a little bit at the American Airlines Center, so they're trying to be like more trendy and a little bit yeah, more cool. Yeah, for sure. And so I just said, that's fine with me. I just still go pizza every time at a Mavs game. That's always what I like associate uh with a basketball game or a sporting event. I've gone chicken tenders lately a lot at T-Mobile Arena. Um, I think T-Mobile Arena just put in a, a Shake Shack and, and usually there's a really long line and so you just 
can't spend yeah. that amount of time. But but when you can, I think that's 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 pretty awesome to have at a sporting event. But most of the time, I lean towards pizza or, or chicken tender, something pretty something pretty basic. What's your sauce for the tenders? You're gonna think this is weird. Say no sauce. No, I'm not because. <laughs> Like I go Chick Fil A. Okay. I, I sometimes like I just want to eat. I just want to taste yeah. the chicken. I just so want I the chicken so good. I just want to taste the chicken at Chick Fil A. Now that Polynesian sauce is the bomb, but yeah. sometimes sometimes I just like I just I just go no sauce. And so at the sporting event, I usually do that instead of a ranch, which is just like kind of sort of okay. Um, I just rather have it. I'd rather have no sauce. I'm 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 a bit eh, smidge. I can I I get tend to get a little dirty. So to balance the tender fry with the, like it's, I'm asking for trouble. So I've learned at sporting events, keep it as simple as possible. I don't get to wear white to a lot of <laughs> things, you know, stuff like that, just for that reason. But I keep it as simple as possible at sporting events. Play it safe. Play at it the safe. Raiders games, there is a, a Mexican brisket taco. Ooh. Dude. Sounds amazing. Just right off the bat. It, they have one there. They have it at the university at UNLV, and they have one at Mandalay Bay. The only three spots. They're, it's a wow. local spot. It's ridiculous. It's next level. That's an insight. You know, that's someone should be paying for that info right there. That's <laughs> next. That's next level. They always run out. Next level. No big deal. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, football Sundays. Big football fan. Who's your favorite football team? Please don't say the Cowboys. So no, I won't. I am off the Cowboys. I, I grew up as a Cowboys fan, and and just I just. I'm just off and just, yeah. just completely off uh, that pro, that franchise. So I'd have to say whoever I'm firing on for that weekend becomes my 100%. favorite team. Whoever makes, tried, whoever's I, making me money. Yeah, I tried to jump on the Raiders bandwagon and just I just haven't been able to do it yet. It's not to say it won't come, especially if I start to go to a couple games. Um, and I tried to jump on the Rams bandwagon years ago, you know, going to school in L.A. and then returning to L.A. and all that. But I just haven't found myself attached attached to a team yet what about you same uh i was a cowboy i was a big moose johnson fan i played full uh, yeah, so i was just like yeah i was just like i want to be moose and then it all fell for me it all yeah. fell for me i'm i'm kind of on the bandwagon with the with the raiders we're there in vegas a lot okay. i go to vegas okay. a lot I, I bought i finally bought a jersey for the first time in years well first there we go they, they made my size second because <laughs> <laughs> second because i was like well i'm gonna be there so I've been buying Raiders stuff. I mean, you never know. But like you said, whoever I'm firing, whoever yeah. makes me money, that's who I'm I'm kind of leaning towards. Your barbecue, do you barbecue on Sundays for the games? What's your go-to? What do you what, what's on the what's on your grill? So I go to my broadcast colleague Brent Hanks' house for a lot of Sundays. He's a big Buffalo Bills fan and he's great great, great, a master of, of the grill, a master of your barbecue Sunday. So he makes the best pulled pork. And that is like my zone right there. It's some good, some real good pulled pork with a good sauce. That'll use the, some of the good sauce for. Uh, it's very hard to beat for me. He makes some ribs, which, which are exceptional as well. But his pulled pork, Leo, is so good that that's that's number one on my barbecue list for football. Is it Sunday. bad that my mouth watered right now? Like, I'm yeah, kind no, of it's not, it's I'm not bad at all. Trust it. me, this this is this is melt in your mouth. This is the good stuff. Wow, that sounds really good. So you're a pulled pork Sunday kind of guy. Are you a yeah. sandwich, or do you do it like with nachos? What do you What are you doing your pulled Ooh, pork? I'll, I'll do it both. I mean, I, I can eat it plain just with the sauce, or throw it on a uh, sandwich. He's got some really good of the buns as well. So like, I just whenever I'm going to the Hanks household, I, I know I get to get to bear down for a day and, and enjoy some incredible pulled pork, whether it's in sandwich form or not. That's awesome. I like that. I like that. I like, I like the, that you're able to mix it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not just yeah. a, a, a one trick pony. Yeah, right. for sure. Okay. All right. So now we're going to the calling the clock segment. So what this is, is I'm going to rapid fire you some questions. If you okay. take too long, I call the clock on you. Right. All right. We can, we'll have follow up questions. Gets pretty intense. There's some, Big questions that some of the, the some of our other guests have answered that's caused caused some controversy. Okay. So let's get let's just jump into it. All right. Let's do it. Favorite type of chips? Uh, Pringles. Flavor. The, the the OG the original Pringles. Wow. I don't you get like, I don't get fancy. Yeah 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 for sure. Like it's just it's just not it's not not close in my opinion. 
some good Pringles and, and boom, ball game. If they could create a really, really good pretzel stick. I like the, sorry, I know we're already getting off on a tangent. No, let's the, do it. The very I love fast it. segment. But it's fat. I love the idea of the pretzel stick and, and pretzels are awesome. A good pretzel is great. They just haven't created the dream pretzel stick yet, in, in my opinion. And I've tried many different brands, the Rolled Gold, the Quinn's, and they're good. They're solid because it's hard to be bad, right, when you just throw a yeah. bunch of salt in there and try to make magic happen. But I still think that there's work to be done on the pretzel stick. And if somebody can do that work, maybe flavor it a little bit. I, like I, I don't know. Mustard? Ooh, see, see now I, I can lean towards there. And I've had some of the honey mustard like nuggets. And those, those are decent, but not the sticks, which I imagine are hard to flavor, harder to, to manufacture. Yeah. But I, I think I think that that should be that should be the next uh, place so that the food industry. You prefer goes. the stick over the actual pretzel, the, the the shape. Yes, yes. Again, more in theory than, than anything, because I don't think the pretzel sticks are great yet. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. But if okay. the pets the pretzel stick had the 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 X factor, you would choose yeah. that over the pretzel shape. What you're yeah, I would choose that over the pretzel shape, and I would choose that over Pringles. I would choose that over almost anything. Are you a chips and sandwich kind of guy? Do you put your chips in the sandwich? No, no, I do not. Okay. Favorite type of sandwich? Good segue into this one. Uh, favorite type of sandwich would just be a really good club sandwich. So you give me some of the good turkey, the good ham, that crispy bacon, not just kind of no, like I'm throw not, it on yeah, and it's kind of yeah, yeah, but if it, if that bacon is crisp and that bacon is good and that bread is good, we can't forget about the bread and a, a little bit of mayo, like a light spread of mayo, then hmm. then then we're then we're good. Are you a then, toasted bread kind of guy? Yes, 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 yes. One hundred percent, yes. Got to be toasted. Burger me. and you? sandwiches, or just sandwiches? Um, I mean, I I love love love. A good hamburger so so it's both for me i i would prefer a really good club sandwich over a really good burger i think okay cool favorite type of non-alcoholic drink um you know i wouldn't necessarily call it a favorite but what i drink the most is the white cans of the monster energy so you know this goes back to what we were talking about earlier it says zero calories it says zero sugar it and it says it has a lot of vitamins it must be good for you right so that's what I probably have the most. That's my caffeine boost. I don't really drink anything other than that and 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 water. Okay, cool. Favorite adult beverage? Yeah, now we're talking. It, Leo, if you could get me a glass of really good tequila, I'm talking 1942 oh. neat, then, then we're just good. Shut it down. Let's go home. If it's a more like casual drink at a bar, I'll do a tequila and soda, um, like a Casamigos Blanco and soda with a lime but but a really good tequila neat is is definitely my favorite but i enjoy some wines as well and enjoy some beers as well but there's nothing like a good tequila for me so you mix it up i mean you you, you yeah yeah you're that's good i got a lot of flack from one 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 they call mr norman chad oh boy. i'm not a huge drinker but i will have an occasion whiskey sour when i'm feeling frisky you know yeah yeah, a whiskey sour, and, and that's you speaking. So Norman Chad, yeah, he gave me a bunch of that? crap. Yeah, he gave me Why? a bunch of crap because he he says that that's not a really a drink. <laughs> you know, it's just him being trying to be funny, which is it's hard for him nowadays. You know, oh, he's, boy. he's past his prime. But hey, it's either him <laughs> or there. Norman, Norman today at the WSOP press conference told a Radio Shack joke. I'm like, that bit's still around, you know, 20 years. I'm like, Norman, Radio Shack does not exist anymore. Shut down in like 1998. That <laughs> he is... keeps going with it. I love him. Oh, my goodness. I tell him, get a writer. It might help you. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite type of coffee if you drink coffee? I do not. I, I do not. So I, I go, I do the, the energy the drinks. Yeah, the monsters. And I just... I've, I've just never been able to uh, appreciate coffee or, or, or like coffee. I just don't we, like the taste. I've tried it once and okay. it was death. Yeah, it was enough. So do you me. do any kind of caffeine? Uh, I'll do Coke Zero. Coke Zero, okay. Or Diet Dr. Gotcha. Pepper. Gotcha. That's about it. Uh, but no, yeah, I really, that's that's my that's my caffeine intake. So not a whole, whole ton. Uh, how, what's your record? How many monsters have you had in a day? Oh, I bet I've had three before in a day but nothing crazy nothing crazy i oh, mean i i will rarely have two 
So uh, I'm you. I, now I will always have one, but I uh, <laughs> I don't jump in the territory with two and more uh, too often. Unless I, I mean, sometimes I'm playing a poker tournament and I've been playing for twelve hours and and need a little bit of a pick me up, and I think it helps me focus. That might just be a mental thing. Like I'm like, okay, I'm injecting this into my body, so I'm not going to be a little more sharper. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, so yeah, I, I bet I've had three before on a day where I just got no sleep the day before I had to work and it's a super late work shift, something like that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Favorite type of pizza. You know what? You just give me a good, a really good New York style slice of cheese pizza. That's got some good crisp to it. And yeah, good undercarriage. I'm watching Dave Portnoy's pizza reviews All all the time, all the time. He needs to come to Las Vegas. I'm still struggling to find a pizza place here. I've got a decent one in Rosati's, which is a little bit more Chicago style, but it's got that it's got that pretty crisp uh, undercarriage. So it's it's good. It's like a con a consistent seven point eight, seven point nine, even approaching the eight point zero level. I just feel like Leo in Las Vegas, Nevada. I need to be able to be able to order a pizza that's in the 8.5 or over range. hundred percent. Yeah. No, you have the best steak, some of the best, yeah. everything. Why can't we get a solid pizza? You know what yeah. it is though? I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the water. New York East coast water huh. is next level. That's right. In, in Cali, there's not very, very good pizza at all. Oh, it's because the water is different. I promise you. I know it sounds really ridiculous, but trust the fat guy. Let me tell okay, you. Okay, I trust you. Peace. I trust you for but, sure. But okay, what about Pizza Rock? You've had Pizza Rock? I've not had Pizza Rock yet. So that's one that's my next kind of on the list. The if I, I order some, I'm gonna take you some wherever you're at. Yeah. Please. Dude, Pizza Rock's my favorite. Okay. What would you rate it? Scale of one to ten. Uh one to ten, it's gonna be an eight three, eight two. Great, great, great. I, I they're, love Detro- it. they're Detroit. I don't know if you know their Detroit style. What's the Detroit like, style? It's like a, it's square pizza. It's fluffy, okay. but looks okay. heavy. But when you bite into it, it's like heaven. Good. Let's try it. Yeah. I'm sending you, I'm going to send you the picture. I, I take pictures of all my pizza. Obviously okay. there's a pizza in our logo for a reason. <laughs> I love pizza. I just got back from New York. Oh, nothing compared It's my first time. Nothing compared to it. There's nothing. It period. can't be, can't be New York pizza. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. All right. This is one of the big questions that we're going to ask. Chick-fil-A or Popeye's? Chick-fil-A, 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 Chick-fil-A. It's just like, it's not close. It's not close for me. Are you a Nuggets or a sandwich guy? I, I go Nuggets. The sandwich is fantastic. And I don't mind going with the sandwich. It's just to go back to what we were talking about earlier. Just give me that really good chicken and, and I don't really need anything else. Their sandwiches are exceptional. That honey butter chicken biscuit that you can get for breakfast if you want it is is. Oh. Top notch. It's, it's it might be a stone cold ten out of ten, but overall, I'm mostly Nuggets guy. All right. How do you take your steak? Uh, medium. Okay. Favorite cut of steak? So, a bone in fillet is like the dream for me. Kind of the, the mo- my most common order is probably just like a basic fillet or, or basic strip, but the bone in fillet. If I have my choice on the menu and leo you were paying or something then then i could just go with it with a bone in play <laughs> of so. course i'm anytime you know okay. your tab's always open with me thank you <laughs> favorite fast food burger uh fast food burger we talked about this earlier i think i, I think i would go with with shake shack shake shack um, okay yeah I, th- I think they have the best the most flavorful uh, burger out of the fast food. Spot There's so in many opinion. in New York. It's re- I didn't oh, realize. Yeah, there are a ton. And yeah, Dude, I yeah. didn't realize it was just like shake, shack, shake, shake. I was like, whoa. And they're all packed. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. All right. Tater tots or fries? Fries, 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 fries. Love me some good, good fries. That's the dream right there. Steak, curly, or waffle? Say that again. Steak, curly, or waffle fries? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Waffle, uh, eh, waffle fries, waffle fries. Good curly fries are, are tough to beat, but uh, waffle fries can be can be truly exceptional. 
yeah, it, 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 that's, that's a good one. That's one of my favorite questions. Because yeah. like with a steak, I'm definitely, I want a steak fry. I mean, like, you know, if, you, sure, if, sure, I, if sure. I get that, yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more of the curly, maybe waffle fry kind of guy though, for sure. Favorite chocolate candy? Um, I would probably go basic and say a milk chocolate Hershey's bar. Okay. That's, that's, that's all that I need um, for chocolate. Almonds or no almonds? No, no, no almonds, no nuts whatsoever. I don't want to interfere. I don't want to get in the way of the good stuff. <laughs> the good <laughs> stuff. No, no, I agree. Okay. Favorite non-chocolate candy? I love, and it's, it's, it's so bad for you, and it's so bad for your teeth also, but those Swedish fish, man, those, those oh. little red things, I just can't stay away from those. Every time I'm at the airport, I got a flight ahead. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to have some Swedish fish. It's gonna, I'm on the plane. I'm in a great mood. I open it up. I eat every single one. And then 32 minutes later, just feel like absolute death. But, but they're still my favorite. Yeah, I mean, of course. Okay, so I get flack for this question. I'm, okay. I'm not bougie, but when it comes to water, I'm bougie. What's your favorite brand of water? I appreciate the question. I, I respect the question enough because I, I can be kind of bougie on the water selection to the point where... I just won't order a water from the cocktail waitress and just go get a water at the convenience store at the casino because I know there I can get like a smart water or a Fiji or a vitamin water. I know that's a little bit different. Um, so I would probably go smart water. Wow, that's a first. I, I like it. I mean, I respect the water game. You mm -hmm. know, I, I expect the, the array of choices you gave. I'm going to go Aw Awa Pana. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's that's my favorite, and then that's yeah. the choice of the poker high rollers in the studio. They're always loaded with the aquapana because that that's what that's what they do. Well, I got one thing in common. Maybe I can get their poker. Yeah, skill right now, baby. Yeah. Woo! All right, uh, all right. Chips Ahoy or Oreos? Oreos. I mean, unless unless you're talking about just basic, regular single stuffed Oreos, then I would have to go Chips Ahoy. But if you're talking double stuffed Oreos. Then I would go double stuffed Oreos, and it's oh. not even close. Yeah, I think it's a huge difference. Like I yeah. think double stuff is next level. Whoever came up with the original Oreo should be fired. Like, it, like yeah, it's just it's just it's just it's just not not close. And and you can't go too far the other way. Remember they tried the mega stuff, which was like which is like a two point six x stuff. I don't think you can do that either. I think it's no. too overwhelming. I think double stuff is the perfect combination so give me double stuffed oreos over really any of the other cookies uh all day yeah 100 percent. now i almost lost a friendship over this i had a buddy bring me chips ahoy that were the chewy chips ahoy i mean we almost had issues oh, yeah the chewy versus the the crispy ones yeah we've yeah, been friends since we were five years old i didn't find this out till we were freshmen in high school he brings out the chewy chips ahoy i almost called my mom to come pick me up immediately <laughs> it was that it was that it was that kind of a we had we had a serious talk and I said if I ever come just leave those in the pantry. I'm I don't want them. And yeah, then I, put, I them in the them, yeah. put them in the microwave. Put them in the microwave and heated them up. Oh okay. And just like did make them even more even, chewy yeah, or it, something or like yeah. he's a principal right. now at a high school, whatever. But the story still gets brought up because it's it, it grossed me out. Period. Yeah, I hope he doesn't teach the kids to No, no, not anymore. Thank God. He's out of the classroom. Okay, good. All right, Gatorade or Powerade? Gatorade, Gatorade for me. What flavor? Uh, that blue Gatorade. I mean, I, I don't have Gatorade that often anymore, but if I can get my hands on a blue Gatorade, that's that's very tasty. Ooh, yeah, I like that. All right, this is another big question. Egg roll or spring roll? I'd say, I'd say egg roll. I don't have the strongest of opinions. I enjoy them both. Um, I think... I think I would go with egg roll. That's good. Fair. So the argument with the other guests that I've had is the egg roll is some people are just so soggy, like it's too much. Yeah. So they go spring roll because it's a little crunchier, but then they don't have the flavor of the pork. Right? So those have been the yeah. those have been the arguments we've gotten. So yeah. All right, Coke or Pepsi? Uh Pepsi. Pepsi for me. Yeah, which first is guess. probably a little bit say, more more rare that it's, it's Pepsi. You're the first guest to say Pepsi. I will. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the seven, for sure. Okay, this is going back to, this is old school. 
I asked this question because I was an avid fan of what's your favorite hot pocket? The ham and cheese, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best. It's just the one that I remember. Yeah, because the most like they had the twelve packs. Remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just always remember the ham and cheese hot pocket. I don't remember any of the. I know there are a million flavors, but like for me personally, it was just always that flavor. So that's what sticks in my mind the most. <laughs> All right, gushers or fruit roll ups? Ooh, gushers! I'm so glad you brought up gushers. I mean, it's it's just. It's just gushers, uh, and it's it's definitively gushers for me. I love those little things. Okay, so gushers. This is a, another tidbit of fatism. <laughs> gushers is came out with a gummy, like oh. a like a Swedish fish type, like oh. a sour patch. They trans they transitioned into a candy form. Like I, it's I haven't tried it. My wife's a huge fan. Gets them whenever we can. So they're sold out everywhere right now because they're it's a, it, you know wow. gushers were, gushers are a hit like that's that's the candy of the kid you know <clears throat> gushers so, still going does it have the little like sweet juice in the middle of the of course the candy? but it's it's okay, different good. it's like bigger I, it's they're good I'm yeah. I'm gonna take a couple yeah. when I see you I'll throw you some for sure let's go throw me some gushers and some pizza <laughs> favorite vegetable uh carrot I just always eat carrots I'm just I just eat carrots a lot so that would be that would be my favorite bacon or sausage bacon 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 especially crispy bacon like we talked about earlier oh. crispy bacon with some eggs or crispy bacon you dip that crispy bacon into some maple syrup leo and whew, now now we're talking that now flavor it's level. yeah it's, yeah yeah i like to do the pancake bacon pancake bacon and when i you syrup Ooh. it and then you just cut it and it's like you're getting a bite of pancake with the bacon oh oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I love that kind of breakfast yeah it's crazy good Okay, favorite fast food sandwich. Uh, it'd be, it would be the the Chick Fil A basic chicken sandwich. Um, even though I like the nuggets more there, I, I I would still say that that sandwich is the best in my opinion out of all of the fast food places. What about? Let's say like Subway, Jersey Mike's, Capri. Mm, like mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those spots. I would say, um, I'd say Subway. I mean, I know it's basic, but I, I, I really like their. Uh, if I can get a foot long cold cut combo on Italian herbs and cheese, Oof. toasted. I, I just, I'm just always in heaven. I know it's not the greatest food, and and I still don't even know what meat that cold cut combo is. <laughs> Uh, it says salami I'm somewhere, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's some salami in it. But I, I just, I just love that. It's sandwich. hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I used, I'm, I used to be a huge Subway fan. Then because we don't, we only have Subway here in Brownsville. Okay. So I used to do meatball with pepperoni and salami. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Next level. Throw, throw out some extra sauce with the oh, Ita- yeah. yeah, with the Italian uh, Italian bread. Oh, oh, yeah, that's no, nice. Nothing in your mouth. For That's sure. Nice. All right. Uber Eats or Grubhub? Uber Eats, uh, it's just it's just been the most consistent <clears throat> for me here. Um, you know, I was always using Postmates and then when they transitioned to, to Uber Eats, it's just it's just been the easiest. I bet I've done Grubhub like two times in my life. It's nothing bad about Grubhub. I just always lean Uber Eats. All right, That's fair. All right. You beat the clock. Yes. Great job. All right. We're gonna jump into the next segment. This is one. This is probably one of my favorites. It's called the bad beat segment. Let me let me explain. Okay. I run ridiculous in restaurants. Okay. Ridiculous. I was at a wing barn. It's it's a wing barn. So it's a local restaurant. We went. I'm a big guy. I I, I enjoy eating. So I ordered a hot dog with five boneless wings. Okay. When I was coaching, we would go coach. Right. I would pick a coach every time we would go scout, and I'd be like, "Hey, coach, I'm gonna pay for your." I was a I was a younger I was the youngest coach on staff. It's like, hey coach, I'm gonna pay for your meal today. Come order, I got you. So he ordered, I ordered. We're the first ones. We go sit down. Every, all the other coaches order. Everyone's food's coming out. He gets his food. No big deal. I'm waiting. Nah, okay, maybe I ordered a little extra. Whatever. Lady, I promise you, I have pictures. She comes and brings me one, one wing, just like that. Oh, with with some garnish just drizzled on top. And I, I looked at her and I was like, that. ma'am, does this body look like it eats? I said this. Does this body look like it eats one wing? She laughed. She's like, well, that's what the 
the cook gave me. I said, stop playing. I'm a little bit of a jokester background. I'm, I was I kind of just the coaching staff. I was always messing around, prank, practical jokes. So I said, oh, these guys are messy with me. D- they weren't. She goes back, sir, this is what the kitchen ordered. Look, it says one wing. I said, ma'am, I did not. This is what I ordered. <laughs> said, okay, let me fix it. So she goes back. She brings me the hot dog, no fries, no wings. Oh, come on. So at this point. What's going on here? Yeah, at this point, everyone's done eating. We got to go scout. Long story short, I didn't get my food. (laughs) Since I paid for the other coach, I asked for a refund. They said, that's fine. We'll give it to you. It takes three to five days, but we need to charge you for the the food that you did pay. And I said, you're going to have to come fight me for my card. I said, I'm not giving you (laughs) I said, you're not, I said, you're going to refund the money and that's it. I'm leaving. Like, get out of here. So that that's a bad beat at a restaurant for me. Jeff, when have you had a bad beat in your life at a restaurant? Can you think of anything crazy? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm trying to think, I I mean, of course, you know, I've had like everybody has had a, a super, super, super long wait time when you're really hungry and all that. But I've really, I think I've run the opposite of you at restaurants i think i've just run really really well so i so like nothing at all at all stands out to me uh, about about a really? restaurant it's just i just that's run super so hot good. i save all my run good for my dining that's <laughs> so good dude i like i have stories for today like you all wouldn't even believe the stories i have like i i could spend an hour just giving stories but i i, I respect the fact that you run good that's yeah. a that, that, that's a that's a great thing and and you're a I great agree. person so you deserve it the food <laughs> gods uh look down upon you with with grace i see <laughs> okay here we go credit card roulette yeah you it's a staple now yeah with poker everyone does it do you have any good crazy credit card roulette stories that you can share yeah i was at a bachelor party when i was living in la so this is probably like 2011 2012 somewhere along uh, those lines. And, you know, we went to a really nice steakhouse that good seafood, the cocktails were flowing. This was a group of maybe 17 guys. And so we say, uh, we say, let's roulette it. And the bill's like, I think it's, I want to say it's 2,500 to 3k. It's somewhere in that range, which again, I was getting not, I mean, that's a lot now. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot now, but especially 10 years ago, that was like, a lot, a lot. Uh, and so we make it super dramatic. We go one by one by one by one. And in the end, you know, there are two, there are two of us left. And I offer the other guy, I said, we can do whatever you want to figure out this last. Like originally we were just pull a card safe, pull a card safe, pull a card safe. I said, we can change it up however you want. And the other guys agreed because we're the only two left in the Yes, thing. your money. So he says, okay, I want to change it. And, and so I'm like, okay, so you just want to change the card to be the first card out is actually paying for it or what? It's like, no, I want to go to somebody uh, completely different to choose the card. Oh. And, and so I said, okay, who do you want to go to? And he says, he says, you told me I could do whatever I want. Right. And I said, yeah, 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 that's totally fine. I mean, as long as it's like within the rules, as long as nobody's cheating or anything, that's fine. And he says, okay, I want you to pick the person. And so I'm like, oh, nice. He kind of oh, flipped it on me. Yeah, that's a little reversy. I like yeah, it. a little reversal that's well played. And he said, and then the person, and then that person's going to pick, and that card is going to be the person who has to pay. So he kind of did a double whammy change. Wow. He changed everything. I like so it. You're not, you're not safe if you're pulled, and you've got to go somewhere else. So I go to this. I, I'm not sure why I thought I needed to go to somebody who looked like they were a nice person. But I did. I go to this woman. And like, I kind of explain what she wants to do. And she's, she's at dinner with somebody else. And, and it's just like, when I say not interested, that's just like a huge understatement. Uh, <laughs> like she just, just couldn't care at all about what we were doing. So she's like, okay, whatever. So I need to pick a card. And I'm like, yeah. And so she goes, okay, boom, this one. And it was me. And, and I had to pay. And that's, that's how I lost credit card uh, roulette for all the money. But, but I, I told you I've, I've run pretty well in dining. I've run really well in, in, credit card roulette really since then i don't think i've lost a huge one since really that's crazy yeah. and you can't be that guy way. you can't be that guy who says you know what just put my meal on the side i'll pay for it like i know i know you've got you got it and i love the gamble even though i couldn't oh. afford the the bill i still love the gamble of it all so i'm, I'm probably this is this is uh 
This is G14 classified information I'm about to yeah. give. Before my bankroll was a lot more, uh, uh, less significant than it is now, me and my other buddy, Georgie, were my best poker buddies. We would say, because we would hang out with these guys that are ridiculously rich. They have a lot of money. They'd go eat dinner breaks, like just run up tabs. Yeah. And we would go, we can't be that guy. So we're like, hey, if it's one of us, we chop. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Good. So, Good. We, yeah, it was a whisper behind, like, hey, bro, well, you know, it's, if, if we hit like the, if it's like a twelve hundred dollar, anything over a thousand, let's just chop, and you know, we'll take the, we'll take the loss. All right, all right, all right. So that that was that's our that was our little safety net. But now, it we're credit card relating groceries. I mean, whatever I can gamble or find a way to gamble, I'm doing it a hundred percent. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You guys are in it for the gamble for sure. And also, Leah, I love the G14 classified little rush hour. Oh, your little rush uh, hour? What's your, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite, I, it's got to be the OG rush hour, but rush hour two is very close in my mind. And then rush hour three is abysmal. So. Yeah, so <laughs> we're on the big bus here in New York, and I make a reference <laughs> when, when he <laughs> says, Carter, you're supposed to be watching Lee. And he said, and I, and I made the reference, I'm not Carl Lewis. <laughs> Remember when he jumps up, grabs onto the side, and everyone looked at me, and I was like, and my wife was like, well, why did you just randomly yell? I was like, <laughs> babe, it's rush this hour. Is, this is like the scene, yeah, yeah. And then she was like, oh, my God, yes. And I was like, of course, okay, it's so rush hour. Okay, yeah, where he it. jumps on the sign. And yeah, like, I remember. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, so I was like, all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm huge. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last question. You can take – You've. I'm sure you've dined with some of the, the greats. But if you can take any poker player to dinner, sit down with them, who are you taking? Um, I would take uh, – I think I would take Ivy because there's so much unknown about him and there's this allure around them. And I'd love to at least try to dive into, you know, what what he's thinking during certain moments, what he's made of his career, what drives him, what motivates him that that's where I just will naturally go to for like dream interview or sit down dinner or anything of the sort. Um, and then from an entertainment factor, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to go to dinner with, with Daniel before, um, with Phil before, which is Phil Homme before, which is uh, quite entertaining to say the least. And I'd really love to have a sit down dinner with Jason Kuhn because I find him fascinating and a really uh, inspiring poker player. And I admire kind of his, uh, his, his routine. In this that's game, crazy. You're the second does. person to say Jason Coon, dude. Really, really. Yes, that's, that's dude, that is crazy. But it's, it's not. It's not that surprising to me because I think I think it's it'd be a very valuable hour or two. You know, I think you could learn a lot from Jason Coon. I think you could learn a lot about Phil Ivy, but I think you could learn a lot from Jason Coon. Yeah, and just the way he carries himself, his demeanor, yeah. Yeah. his overall aura. I mean, I know, but it's just you can just. Like you're the kind of like before when I first started, I would go up to get, Hey, nice meeting you, whatever. Yeah. Like I'd still go up to him today and be like, Hey bro, just, you know, appreciate what you do for the game. Can I get a picture? Like I would still do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. for sure. Fan, I would fanboy out. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, he'd be great in those. response to that. Huh? He'd be great in response to that too. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. Like he's one of those guys that I'd still go and definitely do that for, for sure. Like, you know, I team bopper it, you know, for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. So yeah, well, I, that's a great answer. I think that's like I, it's not crazy, but it's crazy that out of the eight guests we've had, two have said Jason Coon. So it's really, really cool. I'm gonna tag him when I post it. Nice. And see what he says. Um, but yeah, definitely, man. Jeff, what's next for you? What What do you have planned? Poker Go. Talk to us about that. Yeah, man, it's, it's World Series of Poker time. We are full steam ahead. We get started very, very soon. I know my first sideline reporting gig is on June 2nd, so I'm excited about that. Oh, I'm going to play the housewarming on June 3rd and then sideline reporting the next day. So this is the time of the year that uh, both we work the hardest and we love the most. So I'm thrilled for the upcoming World Series, and it'll just be it'll just be all systems go there. I'll be there every day, and, I'm, I'm, again, I'm so, so excited about it. Awesome. Work hard, play harder. Yeah. Jeff. You have no idea how much it means. I'm barely starting out this podcast. For a person like you to come on, it means the world. Like I said, you have a fan in me, my family, Brownsville. You are a true gentleman, a true, a true great person for the game, and I admire everything you do. And I hope to break bread with you. I know you're going to be busy, but maybe if you're not, 
I would love to uh, take you out to and have a, have a good solid dinner and talk some rush hour and laugh, make, have some yeah. good laughs. I, I would love that, man. And I really appreciate the time. Um, I really enjoyed it. I love what you're doing. I love how you're giving back all of the above. So, so thank you again. And it was, it was great chatting with you. Definitely. We'll keep in touch and uh, go watch Jeff as he kicks butt on the sideline of the World Series <laughs> of Poker. Appreciate it, Jeff. Talk soon, bud. All right, man. You got it. Thanks. Later. Bye-bye.